Hi, uh, my name is Anna. I'm the host of Creative Morning Berlin. Uh, the global theme uh, for August is rituals, and our speaker today was Asisa Asayli, who is going to talk about design for sustainability. I hope you like it. So, okay, now, um, yeah, also from my side, welcome to this. Uh, I think it's going to be a hot August day, so wonderful that we gathered and uh, I will talk about design for sustainability and yeah, my name is Aziza, um, thank you for the introduction Anna and let's start with a question. How does a need for sustainability change the common practice or will there be no change at all? So when you think about your own uh, I have to change the sides, it's, it's <laughs> so it feels more natural that way, sorry. Um, so when you think about your own uh, practice, um, if you work on a project or you're a creative, um, creating something, so just think about, okay, you have done that practice the way you have done it the last decade or maybe years, and now we have a need for sustainability. So. Will there be a change yeah, for us working on the products, creating actually products, services, um, projects, or will just everything stay? Also, I have Oh God! I brought you a quote from uh, John, uh, from the director of material design from Nike Knit. Uh, I think only by understanding that the current system isn't sustainable can you really think about designing the future of it? And that already brings me to, let's uh, think about the status quo. I mentioned, okay, your own practice, how are you doing that? Um, and I brought a couple of design objectives, uh, also with some examples, so just get us into the mindset of Okay, so we design and what are actually our objectives, what we say, okay, this is our measurement for good design or for um, making our decisions, how we continue with the product or project um, together um, or as a freelancer. So we have like classical, I think, design objectives. We all are really aware of like aesthetics, performance, user experience, scale, modularity, taste, comfort, functionality. And uh, yeah, there are some examples here. So one I think classic functional design would be the Billy Ikea. And I have here my zettel uh, from 1978 from Gilles Lundgren. So he designed the Billy shelf for Ikea. And uh, this is definitely a design where we can say, okay, this is measured by um, modularity, definitely price, um, but as well functionality. So then we have here another example. So for example, the Memphis design shelf from Ettore Zotzas from 1981, uh, which we can see it's a clear uh, design objective, for example, by aesthetics. Um, and then I brought another icon, the Sony Walkman um, as well. Um, um, an example from, let me check, uh, from 1979. And um, yeah, this brings together like definitely user experience, uh, functionality, probably aesthetics, probably even more, but just uh, another, I would say, design icon, what we have different objectives we can say from this list. And then um, design thinking. Uh, also, I brought this one because this, uh, I think, one decade or a bit more ago from D school what brought, brought in as another, let's say, design objective, which um, everything is measured by, or mainly a lot, um, by uh, human-centered design. So is the human goes into the center and uh, all the design is measured by that. So then let's have a look about some impact objectives. So here we have objectives such as circularity, zero waste, zero carbon emission, uh, no harm in chemicals, fair trading, repair, longevity, 
low energy consumption, low water consumption. And I also brought you some examples here. Um, yeah, one example um, I think we all know is a Fairphone, so which is an example for circularity and also for repair. Um, and then you see here the blender, which is from one of the startups, which actually um, are working next to me. Um, and they are, um, yeah, it's also, they are actually two designers and they decided to create something with the objective aesthetics, but as well adding repairability to it. And then some examples like Patagonia, I think this is like a Apple example, it's never, <laughs> it's, um, it's always somehow mentioned when it comes to circularity or longevity, um, yeah, because it's also a company which, which is known for um, really taking care of um, uh, impact. And in this case, you see this jacket, which is meant for really longevity and also repair. Um, and then another example we will have a look at later, um, which is also a startup which is uh, really close to um, where my startup is. And they have an oat ring and they decided on purpose to go not in the Tetra Pak to have uh, or to have the oat milk uh, in bottles. So I have another question. How often do you use reusable cups? So who is like, who would say always without exceptions? Okay. And, and who would say never? I mean, who is so brave? <laughs> okay. So, and, and who is kind of in between? You're like, I try to, but sometimes maybe not. So measured by uh, classic design objectives, the reusable cup would definitely have no comfort at all. Yeah? So when, we, when this would be a project, doesn't matter if you use design thinking or like some other classic uh, design objects, it's like, I mean, who, who would like, like to, you get your coffee and then this cup is always dirty, you have to get into the train. Uh, I don't know your tricks, but I try to like get the rest of my coffee usually somehow out of this cup because it needs to go back in my bag. Or I give up and it's like, oh fuck it, I have to switch trains twice, so I, no, no chance, I'm carrying this cup. Uh, and then you have to, you have it at home, you need some extra space next to your fun flashing, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, for your cups and then maybe you find uh, your time to bring them back or they just stack or you bring them to the office and it's like okay maybe someone else brings them back I don't know <laughs> so by this standard it definitely has no not really the comfort what we used to from from the just the throwaway cups but when we look about the impact objectives so we clearly go for the main objective of zero waste and then as well zero carbon emission and longevity And when we look about uh, the supply chain, we can clearly see that we have a lot of ad advantages with our reusable cups uh, for distribution, because we have less distribution, because we need less cups. They stay much longer in the cycle. Um, and then what I mentioned, zero waste, so we have less waste uh, in compared to the throwaway cups. Um, yeah, I brought you another example the eco-friendly cleaning products. Um, I think I have mixed experience with them. I don't know how it is with you. Uh, I think the first time I got my eco-friendly cleaning thingy, uh, I was like, is, is it even working? I was like, what, what does it do? I was like spraying the whole thing. It was not performing as I was used to. However, so from performance, sure, when we don't have the chemicals what we can use in the other cleaning products. There is no chance that we get the same intensity. However, like our flat is not a hospital, right? So like how, how clean does it need to be? Um, so when we look about the, object, uh, the impact objective, it goes definitely into zero waste, yeah, because usually not all of them, but there come many times with something dry and then you mix it with water. 
um, zero carbon emission goes into the direction because when we have uh, less products, like less, less packaging we produce, we have less CO2, and then um, no harming chemicals, which is yeah, good for waters. So when we look at the supply chain here, we have a clear advantage for distribution because it comes, oh, sorry. Oh, no, that's the right one. Okay, so because it comes um, usually with this dry packages or something we mix later in water, so this is lighter, the truck needs le less fuel, and yeah. Um, and then less waste because we all know the package can be reused again and again. But also from aesthetics, I don't know how your reusable thingy look, looks, but it's definitely also not, not something really, it's like really practical. So measured by design aesthetics, usually uh, probably this would, would not go on the market. So this example from the oat drink, what I mentioned, um, they decided on purpose to go with uh, the bottles and as well they're producing in Brandenburg. So therefore they have from the design objectives a higher price and less comfort because we all know how heavy glass bottles can, can be. Um, yeah, on my bike, I usually like go for Tetra Pak, but uh, yeah, if it's something in the bottle, you, you have to carry it, it's really heavy. Um, but yeah, from the impact objectives we have really, it goes into circularity because the bottles stay in the cycle, zero waste uh, and therefore zero carbon emission. In this case, actually, because they're producing locally this would change, sure, if they stay locally and um, distributed to other countries. But at the moment, it's, it's local, so really short ways. So we have seen all these examples where thinking about our own, I think it goes to rituals, fits really well. We talked with Anna, it's actually a really well-fitting topic because we have our rituals. We can see it with the reusable cups, with the cleaning things is something we have done before, always the way we have done it, and now something new is coming up. Um, and it seems like a bit that it's always an extra step we have to take. Therefore, when we think about our own design practice, it's really important to communicate the why. Because when we understand why we're doing all this hassle with the carbs, with the cleaning, with, with a lot of other things, then we're willing to take this extra step. This is just one example I brought. Is someone here working for maybe the app from DHL or has some, some numbers? Okay, then I, I, show, I share you the example with you, but I'm still really curious um, if it makes a difference. But I like that when you, um, when you get you, you want to deliver a package, DHL asks you, hey, the same price, but it will take you one day longer, but it gets delivered by train. I've never seen this before. <laughs> Ingo's never seen that before. Okay, I took the screenshot lately myself, so Ingo, we talk later. How yeah. I. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I was never asked at the post office, too, only on the, on the online app. Um, it's just one example, right? Um, so it's about communicating the why. Yeah, so it's like, imagine your package is just super slow and then later someone's like, maybe you already changed from DHL to some other packaging company. Yeah, because you're like, oh, they're so slow, they always take one day longer. But <laughs> if you have the knowledge about, hey, okay, it, I, I can decide and then when it's by train, maybe it's not so urgent and then it's definitely less carbon which will this package consume, then with this information, um, I think, I don't know how it's in your case, but then I'm usually more willing to, yeah, okay, let's, let's do it this. It's, it's not really takes any harm. But when we look at these examples, it seems a bit that design for sustainability means we eliminate all the fun. But that's actually only partly the case. I had it in. Funktioniert ja. Let's have a look again on our cleaning products. So when we have the standard cleaning products, not the eco-friendly ones, then yes, we have our clean baths, for example. 
but it creates a new problem. In this case, it needs the harming chemicals to get that clean. Um, and then we have easy to use packaging because yeah, it's super nice. We get this package with our cleaning and we can start right away, nothing to mix. Um, and then you throw the bottle away. But this creates a problem of high CO2 emission and lots of waste. So when we look again on the supply chain here, this means, yeah, we decided from the objectives, the classic design objectives, this has amazing performance, maybe the bottle, the packaging looks amazing, but the problems appear on a level which usually are not visible to us. In this case, for example, distribution. So we need the trucks get loaded already with the bottles, with some fluid, so it's much more heavy. Um, and then I think the worst thing is really all the chemicals which come into our waters. And what I mentioned, it's not a hospital, it's nothing where it needs to be like that every bacteria is, is gone forever. And then we have all the waste at the end of the cycle. And the same with our takeaway cups, right? So we have like amazing solution, thinking about this would be a project, everybody was ideate on, on uh, let's say, for example, user centricity. It's like, yes, the user wants something. And then when, when this person uh, had, had their drink, it's, it's good when, when the hands are free, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, it's really comfortable. I know I mix them myself, but it has, therefore a high CO2 emission and um, the dirty cups uh, what we have to carry around come with a throwaway cups for the price that we have a lot of waste as we all know. It's a classic example for waste the cups actually. So in the supply chain similar picture distribution and and at the end of the cycle uh, it's really much more waste. So then I brought again some design icons. Um, I would just give it, we already saw um, our amazing Memphis uh, design room divider for the Toro Sozzas from 1980, uh, from 81, sorry. Um, and then we have the classic Luz, uh, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe chair, the Barcelona chair on the right, and uh, Marianne Brandt's uh, tea infusioner from 1924. And I brought this design icons because I haven't talked with Mies or with Marianne, it was not possible, but I'm certain that it was not designed with impact in mind. However, these are amazing impact examples as well, even if impact was probably not on top of the list. Because when we think about longevity, I mean, who would throw away this Barcelona chair? or the Memphis design uh, shelf, or this wonderful uh, tea infusioner. So if, if, if it's on your mind, let me know. I will pick it up. <laughs> so so th this is just an example that design, in this case, actually already made an impact, even when it was not on the list. But it's now we have like a lot of knowledge about it, so that means taking uh, into mind the design objectives and the impact objectives is probably um, a good way to go, especially if you have, if, if your design is for sustainability. So I always say sharing is caring. Um, because we saw the supply chain, that means on the surface, it looks like, yes, we have a lot of uh, fun with our comfort and performance. But then uh, when we look deeper into the supply chain, uh, there is less fun for many people. It can be also in other countries, just stuff we, we do not see. So that means when we maybe give up a bit from our comfort, we can all have a bit more of this candy. And therefore, uh, design for sustainability means actually more fun for all of us. Even if in the first place we think it takes something from us because we so rituals, we so used to do certain things, to design a certain way. So all of 
all of you who, what I said, want to integrate sustainability. Um, we, we have done, it was done the way, which is good. It is not meant to, that it changed totally, but it's just when you have a certain goal about sustainability, there is definitely the status quo, which we all know is based on linear economy, which is not sustainable. So therefore, um, the end of my talk, I just brought some of the takeaways together for you. Um, so there are additional objectives when designing for sustainability, which I already mentioned. I think this is something hopefully I inspired you and you can take some out for your own practice. And the objectives might come with some trade-offs and therefore communicating the why. Yeah, so we, it's, it's actually about behavioral change. Yeah, and as designers, for example, communication designers, communicating the why might make a difference that people are ah, okay, that's why I'm doing that for. And then understanding the cut status quo, what I already mentioned. So also for your own, the company or where you work in, if there is a goal of sustainability, then it's always good to start there. Yeah, where, where are we standing? Is there some status quo? Uh, and what of this system is not sustainable and we want to change? And when solving a problem, we have seen that other problems can appear. So sometimes it seems so simple that we have the best solution, but look one layer deeper, there might be some other problems appearing. And we've seen it already actually in the de design icons, but also in other des uh, examples, design can make far-reaching changes because we, I always say, we're creating the world we live in. So let's continue that, but more sustainable. Thank you so much.